What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Coach Zach Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Brands. I have a very, very special guest with me, with me here today, Coach Des, Desmond Dunham, author, speaker, coach, entrepreneur, just came out with his book, Running Against the Odds. You can get it on Amazon. It's a book, it's a book of his coming of age and triumph story about how he overcame odds on and off the track. Uh, coach Des, how are you doing today? Hey, Zach. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. Um, you know, I love what you're doing here and how you're touching so many lives. And, and I mean, you're an inspiration to many. And, and I hope that I can continue to, you know, do the same thing that you're doing with my book, Running Against the Odds. And, and so uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on today. So tell us a little bit about your story, how you overcame the odds on yeah. and off the track. Sure. You know, I, I end up writing this this memoir. Um, you know, running just changed the complete trajectory of my life. And going out for my high school cross country team, it ended up just changing my entire pathway. I had previously been cut by three other school teams from elementary as well as middle school. And so I was a bit apprehensive. And lo and behold, I ended up meeting my high school coach who was a father figure for me and, you know, writing, running against the odds. It, it just reflects my two decades of coaching, a lot of my personal stories, you know, woven into this, into this book. And, and, you know, the, the clear message is that we're not alone when we go through these tough times in life and that we just have to remind ourselves of all the people and the resources that we have around us. And when we take advantage of that, it, it really helps us to, to bounce back to, to live the, the life that we were truly meant to live. Absolutely. Well said. It's, it's okay to ask for help. It shows strength to ask for help. We have great people around us in our community, in our family, and they want to help. So everyone, let's Let's really cultivate more humility and ask for more help. So just just for me, actually, quick question. How long is a cross-country meet or match? So in high school, it was uh, 5K, 5 kilometers, which is 3.1 miles. And then when I competed at Howard University for 10K, it was, well, it was between 8 to 10K, which was uh, up to 6.2 miles. Okay. All right. Cool, man. So... You know, we're, we're all going to face challenges in life, right? And that's a lot about what this book is about. It's about 100%. facing challenges and overcoming, right? Winning against the odds, overcoming all the odds that are in front of you. So in life, we're going to have these challenges. What's the mindset? What's the mentality when experiencing a big challenge in front of you? Yeah, so I, I really feel that running just helped me in so many ways. I mean, one, it became an escape as well as an outlet for some of the challenges that I was dealing with through my childhood, but it was also one of the most arduous experiences that I had ever had playing any sport. I mean, it's you against yourself. You have to have the internal fortitude and running and I, we have a, a, a love hate relationship. So, <laughs> um, so I, 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 re I, I really learned to, to overcome pain. Uh, I learned how to channel anger and and other shortcomings into my running and and you know this i mean you you you're 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 all around and, and you're you're running yourself and and we know the endorphins and the serotonin that we get from i mean there's a lot of benefits associated with running i didn't know then the science behind it but i did know that after a good long run i felt like a different person it would shed stress off of me and it would just allow me to, again, just be the best version of myself because, I mean, we, we go through things and it starts to pile on layers and layers of, of stress. And next thing you know, you, you're, you're not reflecting the character and the person of who you are. And so running just really taught me how to, sort of speak, defeat myself. And, 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 and I'm just so thrilled and happy that to this day, I still am able to go out there and run 30 to 40 miles a week. And, and, and even times when I'm having a stressful day and 
I come home a little cranky. My my wife will would say, uh, you need to go out for a run. <laughs> <laughs> you need to come back a different person. All right, lose the attitude. And and, and she's right. I mean, it, it just it helps me just to reset. It's my outlet. And yeah. and and you know, everyone's not going to be a runner. And I just hope that 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 everyone can find some type of outlet that will help them to deal with the everyday stressors that, that we deal with in, in everyday life. Absolutely. You mentioned defeating yourself, right? And it's important that we continue to be better than the person we were yesterday, 100%. right? On yesterday's run, you know, you hit X amount of miles per minute or you push past that wall when you felt extremely wounded and defeating right. yourself is being better than the person you were yesterday and stepping into the greatest version of yourself each and every day. Which, which you said, and that is so important. We're either growing or we're dying. There's no in between. We're either getting better or we're getting worse. I, I, I love your philosophy. <laughs> Thank you, man. I love your philosophy too. You mentioned uh, internal fortitude, which I, the first time I've heard of that, internal fortitude, that's so well said. How can you, first of all, explain internal fortitude a little bit in your own words. And then tell us how someone can cultivate more internal fortitude. The, the human body is meant to be comfortable. And it, it is just so important that we realize that it is meant to be comfortable. So anytime you have to really challenge or stress yourself, then there's going to be a reaction. That, that little person on your shoulder, uh, the negative thoughts, the negative emotions, the 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 you know, the, 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 the short ceiling where, you know, you, you're not supposed to go out above this ceiling. You're not supposed to get outside this box. And, and so there's some benefits to having that little person. It may save us sometimes, but it also could be a detriment. And, and having that internal fortitude, you're, you're, you're going beyond the person you were yesterday. And mm-hmm. I always say this, if you want bigger things in life for yourself, you have to give up who you are for who you want to become. And your body is programmed to operate with who you are. That's your comfort zone. And, you know, running uh, distance especially really got me out of my comfort zone because it had me shooting for goals and dreams that Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it would really take. But I had to live in that space that I could actually attain those goals and dreams. And, and that's, that's pretty uncomfortable. That's where you're conquering yourself on a daily basis. And so it, it, it is, it, it's not something that you're born with. It is something that if you put yourself in the right environment around the right people, you know, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. And so in life, you have to put yourself around positive people You have to read positive affirmations on a daily basis. You got to watch the Zach Rance uh, uh, podcast. (laughs) Exactly. And and there's a lot of truth to that. You you have to, you know, people who have done it, you you know, they're going to provide the roadmap. You don't have to go out there and do it yourself. And I think a lot of people think that they're alone and they're not. You know, there's a lot of resources. And so you just have to be willing to step out on blind faith sometimes and, and, and start to give up who you are for who you want to become. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Well said. We all have goals in life, whether you want to write a New York times bestseller, or you want to run a 100 kilometer race, or you want to find the perfect mate for you. It's not what you have to do to get there. It's who you have to become. Okay, if you want to be an Iron Man, you have to become someone that trains two and a half hours a day. You have to become someone who has unwavering discipline with what you put in your body, right? So it, you you said it so great. It's like you got to become that person. You got to become the greatest version of yourself. So internal fortitude, something that we can really continuously cultivate, right? And I think you and I we do it outside while we're running. We that's where we we cultivate our internal fortitude, but there are other areas where we can continue to develop and and implement what we learn on the track in real life. 
but I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. What is a simple way that the listeners that are listening right now, if they want to cultivate or implement more internal fortitude, what's a very easy and simplistic way to start developing that internal fortitude? That, that, that's a great question. And, and Zach, the, the most important thing is, you know, going back to what you said, I mean, it's the backwards mapping from your goals. And, and we live in this society where we want to play checkers, but it's all about playing chess. It's all about thinking 20, 30, 40 moves or I can just replace moves with weeks and months and even years. You want you want the Ironman to be a lifestyle. You know, you want mm-hmm. the, you know, that that race to be a life. You don't want it just to be a one and done. Um, and yeah. so when you start talking about two and a half hours of training, it's not something that you're going to do tomorrow and next month or in two months. You know, I always tell my athletes inch by inch is a cinch. Yard by yard is too hard. And when you just try to do too much too fast, it, it First of all, it's not fun. <laughs> Second of all, you're going to burn out. And third of all, yeah. you're going to probably get injured. And so yeah. if I and so I'll just even speak from a personal standpoint. At one point, you know, I went into a little bit of a depression. I hit a pinnacle in my career. And then all of a sudden um, coming off of that pinnacle, I just hit this low moment. And I next thing I know, I picked up about 30 or 40 pounds and I'm like, who is this guy? And and I was willing to live there for a while. And then I think my, my very own kids reminded me that I wanted more for myself. And I wanted to be able to get out there and play ball with my kids and run with my kids. And, and so that's the other thing. First of all, finding something you can hold on to that's going to give you that daily spark. It can be anything that pulls you to that daily spark. And then... It's all about just taking one step at a time. So I, I, I can easily get up to doing a 14-mile run every once every two weeks or so, and I play basketball, I lift weights. But, but, Zach, when I was going through that dark period, I mean, I'm going up to the local track, and I'm jogging 100 meters, walking 100 meters jogging 100 meters walk and I'm doing that for a couple of weeks so my workout might have been over within in 15 minutes and then a few weeks later it became 200 meters and then power walk 200 meters but you fast forward it took me about a year and a half where I could get up to the workouts and also the body image that I wanted to achieve. And Mm -hmm. lo and behold, you know, over a decade later, I'm still able to keep that lifestyle going. And the reason I'm able to keep it going was, I mean, it was painful at times, but I didn't do too much. You know, I got my playlist together. Um, It was my chance to have my escape from everything else and, and my escape from who I didn't no longer want to be. And I started to feel accomplished and and I was super smart about taking the baby steps. You know, you, you got to look at your goals as this really big staircase and all you're looking to do is take one step every day. When you start trying to take the two and the three and you skip steps, unfortunately, that you're not living the lifestyle and training and being fit and healthy is a lifestyle that you mm-hmm. eventually, you know, formulate the habits that you only dreamt that you could have and, and only dreamt of the discipline you can have. You're not just going to get the discipline in, in two weeks or three weeks or okay. skipping that one. It's all about, it's, exactly. It's all about consistency. Yeah. It's about doing it day in and day out. An inch is a cinch. A yard is too hard. I love that quote. It's so true. You just got to make one small step each and every single day. Those small wins consistently executed over time amount to massive results. I'm not doing an Ironman to just do an Ironman. I'm doing this to 
implement and cultivate a healthy lifestyle around exercise, recovery, nutrition, and mental health. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing this for the next 60, 70, 80, 150 years if I live that long, right? So, you know, if, if there was one way to really implement and start being more aware and conscious of your own internal fortitude, this is for the audience, you know, meditation practice or maybe just running half a mile, you know, maybe walking for 20 minutes, getting those 10,000 steps in. Someone who's on a very beginner mindset, right? Getting those 10,000 steps in. It's just having a win today. Getting that win today. And not a win against someone else who weighs more than you. And not a win against someone else who's doing more sales than you. A win against who you were yesterday. So you can look back at the person yesterday, hey, I was better than you. And if you can do that every single day for 365 days in a row, you know, you'll be over 365% better than you were last year. Exactly. And I mean, it's, that's, it's simple yeah. as that. That's, 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 spot on. Yeah. that's spot on. I mean, I was just telling my athletes that in life, you got to put blinders on to some degree where you have to be willing to live in your lane and, and, and script out your own movie or your own book. When you start worrying about what's in someone else's movie or book, then unfortunately you, you're 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 going to add a lot of ch- more challenges mentally because yeah. we're all giving something, you know, strengths and weaknesses, and and sometimes it appears that that others have things that 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 we don't have and and that they don't have challenges in life, and we sometimes send ourselves through this frenzy for, for no reason. If we stay in our own lane, you know, and we use people to inspire us in, the, in a healthy way, then that's going to be motivated. And the same thing with competition. Competition is you merely use competition to spark you to be the best version of yourself, not to be envious of that, you know, other competitor or other person in life, but you, you use them, use them to inspire you. So, You know, make sure you got healthy, you know, relationships around you. Exactly. It doesn't matter why you're being better. It doesn't matter why you're being stronger, why you're being smarter. It doesn't matter why you're giving more and helping and serving more people as long as you're doing it. So using that motivation in a healthy way, sometimes comparing ourselves to other people obviously is bad, but in other cases, it's good. If it's bringing you up, perfect. If it's bringing you down, We don't want that. And the more that we pay attention to what's going on in the world or the more we pay attention to what's going on in his world or her world or what you think is going on in his or her world, the less focus you have for yourself. Right. And and really being super hyper aware of where your attention's going. Right. Are you scrolling through Instagram? Are you watching the news too much? Are you spending too much time on Netflix? And look, sometimes winding down, watching the news, catching up, watching Netflix isn't a bad thing. But are you aware of how much time you're spending doing it? Yeah. Right. All right, Desmond, What what's the next goal for you? I think the next goal, I just launched a book. And running against congrats. The oh, yeah, thank you. Thank the cover you. looks great. I can't <laughs> wait to you. get my hands on it, man. The cover Girl. looks incredible. Right now, it's the number one new release um, in two categories on Amazon. So I'm super excited about that. And so I'm, I, I am living in a world of promoting a book. And and so what's next for me is that I would love to do book talks to organizations, to schools, to teams. Um, and, and so I want to live in that space where now what, what I have on paper, I want to make sure that it's you know, conveyed to audiences that helps mm-hmm. to inspire others. And you know, I'm very fortunate where I'm an Under Armour coach as well as uh, just was National Coach of the Year. And, and so I'm excited about those things. But it really doesn't mean a whole lot unless I'm using my platform to make someone else's life better. And so I, I really want to live in that space. I have a free downloadable teacher's guide affiliated with Running Against the Odds, and that, that's located on my website. And so I, I, I really just want to live in a space for some time where I can help others to get closer and live in their, their passions, their purpose, and their dreams. And, you know, very similar to what you're doing here. 
Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Absolutely. And there's not a doubt in my mind that you're going to make that impact on a massive, huge scale. Thank you. Uh, to anyone that's listening on Spotify or Apple, you can head over to coachdesdunham.com. That's coach, D E Z D U N H A M, uh, to learn more about Des, to look it up his ventures, to partner with him, to get his book and all the likes. Coach Des, what's one thing that you want to leave the audience with, whether it's um, a physical task or a physical challenge, or maybe it's just something that they can do today to step into that greatest version of themselves? You know, I, I think what was really important is, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. And you were saying this earlier that, you know, we, we're living in this crazy world. And, and if you find yourself finding the time and the energy to help others, it is going to also help you and i think that's the most organic way to grow into who you are and if we had everyone thinking like that this world would be a much better place and so you know there's no fun being at the the top alone and mm -hmm. you know there there there's some satisfaction in that but you're going to look around and 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 ask yourself you know who did i help to get up to the top with me and and so I always challenge others to make sure you're extending yourself, even if it's just something small, pay it for it to a neighbor, to a family member, to your community. Mm -hmm. And and let's all make this world a better place. Amazing, man. Let's all make this world a better place. You don't have to give money. You can give love. You can give respect. You can give forgiveness. Yeah. You can give a helping hand. There's so many ways that we can pay it forward. And... Uh, it sounds cliche when we're growing up. I'm 31. I'm the epitome of a millennial, right? <laughs> we're, we're categorized and we're generalized that, you know, we're lazy and we're privileged. And we are. You know, I, I had a cell phone in my hand when I, was six, when I was in sixth grade. I was 11. You know, these days, I don't know how old your children are. I have a little brother who's uh, 17. He had, a, he had an iPhone when he was in third, fourth grade. Right. Because my mom wanted to be able to get in touch with him when he was going with his friends to the park and stuff. But I feel like as time goes on, we are becoming weaker. We are becoming weaker mentally. And sometimes and I'm, this is kind of a little off topic, but I want to end it with here is just like, you know, that feeling of giving back, that feeling of giving love, that feeling of giving forgiveness and, and giving respect to someone that deserves it and someone that earns it really goes a long way. And it's not just to help other people, but it's to fill our heart. And that's what I was trying to say about the cliche thing, man. I always thought giving, oh, I got to give money. Oh, everyone just says to give, to give, because that's, that's something I want to do. No, you know, you give, it feels good. It yeah. fills you up yeah. giving back. It feels good to serve and to provide value. And when any of us are on our deathbed, when we're 100 years old, right? We're not going to look back at all the money we made. We're not going to look back and say, oh, I wish I would have worked more. We're going to look back and say, what impact did we leave on this earth? What impact did we leave on this earth? And when when all of us are at, at that time in our life, because it will, it will be here eventually, you know, make sure that you can say that to yourself, that, you know, I, I made an impact here. And, and Coach Des, dude, you're doing that. You're still in the very beginning of doing that. I can't wait to see all your success in the future and the continued success of this book, Running Against the Odds. Everyone go get it on Amazon.com. Already um, a new release bestseller on Amazon. Head over to CoachDesDunham.com. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I will link his website below. I'll also link uh, the book on Amazon. Coach Des, thank you so much again for coming today. It was a pleasure. And uh, one last thing for you, actually. Okay. What's the longest m amount of miles you've ran at once? So the longest I've ever run in a training session, I ran 20 miles in high school. And I talk about that practice okay. <laughs> and, and running against the odds. Okay. And then I ran up to 22 miles in college. Okay, I got something for you. On January 1st, I'm running an ultra marathon. Whoa. 100 kilometers. It's about 73, 76 miles. Ooh. All right. It's in Florida, north of Tampa, Brooksfield, Florida. I need someone to do it with me. <laughs> I need right. someone to do it with me. Okay. 100 kilometers. So I'm going to find someone for you, Zach. I'm going to find. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. That dude, works too. Dude, Coach I Des. thought you were going to ask me to hold up a sign and, and maybe run a few miles with you, but um, the, the ultra. 
<laughs> Come on, that, my man. Think about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in your head. I'm gonna put that in your head. All right. That's a you sleep on that tonight. Ooh, that's a different animal right there. But um, but I, I will support you though. Okay, Coach Jess, thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll link up again soon. Sounds good. Hey, thanks again for having me, Zach.